I saw an article yesterday that actually anti media posts as an op ed. It's the nice little it's the it's the CYA. And it's a great cover your ass because it is a fantastic piece. I read the whole thing yesterday and I want to read the whole thing for you right now. It's written by JP Sottle. And it's called Donald Trump, the Crisis Actor, a conspiracy to end all conspiracy theories. With each passing day, the 2016 presidential campaign looks more and more like an angry subreddit moderated by a genetically engineered double Y chromosome man child constructed from the DNA of David Icke and Alex Jones. Although it's easy to dismiss this long, strange electoral trip as a passing political malady rising from America's fever swamps, there are plenty of good reasons to get into the tinfoil millinery business. For a start, the main contest pits a Republican birther who is allegedly popular with truthers running against a notorious Democrat triangulator who many inside her own party believed not only jury-rigged the primaries, but also won help, won with the help from her conniving cronies in the mainstream media. On the other side, the indefatigable Alex Jones is Donald Trump's loudest and most confrontational alt-media megaphone. The matchmaker behind Alex and Donald's brash bromance is on-again, off-again Trump confidant and all-around dirty trickster Roger Stone. Stone is now a fixture on Jones's Infowars. Together, they form a Trumpian tag team ever ready to body slam any globalist who gets in Donald's way. And they're selling a few t-shirts, too. Meanwhile, a former acting CIA director pegged Trump as an unwitting stooge of a power-hungry former KGB agent, codenamed Putin, who, if you believe the Cold War rebooters, runs Russia like he's a cat-stroking Bond villain. Apparently, Putin desperately needs to place a stooge in the White House to achieve his plans for world domination. Then again, others wonder if Putin's stooge is, in fact, actually a Manchurian candidate surreptitiously paving the way for Hillary Clinton's ultimate victory. That plot was supposedly triggered by the husband, codenamed Bubba, of the Manchurian candidate's opponent, Agent HRC, during a friendly phone call just weeks before Trump began his political suicide mission to blow up the GOP. There are a ton of links in this op-ed, just like the one for that phone call, where it notes Bill Clinton called Donald Trump ahead of his GOP launch. Continuing, what we know for certain is that, since securing the nomination, Trump has self-destructed like an orange-hued Mission Impossible tape. Are his jaw-dropping mistakes merely the execution of a sinister plot to elect an otherwise unelectable candidate? And does this plot bring us closer to the alien lizard apocalypse? Well, Hillary's campaign chair has long lobbied the government to finally open its vault and reveal what it knows about extraterrestrial visitors to planet Earth, a wish that Hillary says she'll grant if elected. So cue the Twilight Zone music and maybe we'll find out. And then the latest plot-thickening development, an actual former CIA operations officer named Evan McMullen threw his hat and trench coat into the crowded presidential ring. Doesn't it stand to reason that never-Trumpsters would promote an unknown Mormon spook who used to pick out people for rendition and assassination and, amazingly enough, also worked as Goldman Sachs of Cash Collector? Frankly, Mr. McMullen's stage right or staged by the right entrance fits perfectly into an election year narrative that could be written like a ransom note cut with Hillary's missing emails. And if all of this doesn't have you reaching for your shiny hat to protect your aching head, then consider how the cognitive dissonance of these narratives and counter narratives might be making this election something more than an exercise in futility or a mere choice between two competing evils. That's because the real story of this election is how the media's regurgitative approach to journalism serves up all of Trump's poorly digested red herrings to a truth-starved population. Trump croaks out cranky tropes like an alt-right toad, and the cable news cyclers eat it up and spit it back out again. It's the logical outcome of their profitable fixation on a man who's made more baseless claims than a professional auto accident insurance scammer, and the rubbernecking media obsessively obliged him while also paving his path to the nomination with an unprecedented supply of free media coverage. But now that obsession is transforming this election into a referendum on sneaking suspicions, conspiracy theories, and the strange epithet of trutherism. The term truther is usually applied to anyone who refuses to buy the official story of 9-11. But truther is kind of strange because it turns the word truth into a term of derision and disdain. It's the type of disdain that's long been reserved for the CIA-generated phrase conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theory was the CIA's response to growing doubts about the Warren Commission's lone nut magic bullet move along there's nothing to see here spin on the public ex execution of President John F. Kennedy. 
Stoked by lawyer Mark Lane's landmark book Rush to Judgment in 1966, and by the increasingly high-profile investigation of New Orleans District Attorney Jim Garrison, the CIA desperately needed a counter-conspiracy strategy to fight the public's growing doubts. What they got was a masterpiece of disinformation. The counter-narrative approach was outlined in CIA document number 1035-960. The stated aim of the memo was to, quote, provide material countering and discrediting the claims of the conspiracy theorists, end quote, and that it did. Most importantly, they married the words theorist and theory to conspiracy. By performing that simple semantic trick, the, they weaponized doubt and turned it back on the doubters, and it succeeded beyond Langley's wildest dreams. Not only did it generate doubt about the copious evidence compiled by Garrison, who the New York Times dismissively labeled a theorist in the headline of its 1992 obituary, and not only did it give sheepish journalists an easy way out of asking hard questions about the assassination, but it also cut off inquiry into just about anything that needed to be tidied up with an official story. From the Gulf of Tonkin incident to the October surprise to CIA cocaine trafficking to the public executions of Martin Luther King and Robert F. Kennedy and dozens of other evidence-laden conspiracies, the conspiracy theory label became a one-size-fits-all solution to the problem of public doubt about official cover-ups, illegal wars, and political corruption. And now... In this era of mortal doubts about politics, endless war, banking hijinks, media manipulation, and even the American dream, we suddenly find ourselves drowning in a sea of conspiracy theories. As of the writing of this story, you can put Trump conspiracy theory into the Google machine and it'll spit out about 30,600 results. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, which, according to Trump, isn't really melting because global warming is a hoax perpetrated by the wily Chinese. If you click on more news for Trump conspiracy theory, you'll get 1,930 results just in the recent news category. Among the mountain of stories filed by hundreds of news sources, the GOP's profligate nominee has inserted conspiracy theory directly into the headlines of stories about Orlando Massacre, the outcome of the forthcoming election, the founding of ISIS, the death of Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia, Syrian refugees, and dozens upon dozens more. When it comes to spouting disinformation, Trump is a psychological warrior's dream come true. Strangely enough, the only theory he's avoided talking about is the birther movement he helped create. Then again, Trump implies that Obama's true allegiance is to Muslim terrorists for whom, the assertion goes, he's working as a secret agent inside the White House. Maybe that's where Putin got the idea. Trump did ratchet up the cognitive dissonance when he threw the Kennedy assassination into the swirling mix of tropes clogging up this campaign. Amazingly, Trump not only got away with peddling the National Enquirer's flaccid evidence-free conspiracy theory about Senator Ted Cruz's father's alleged link to Lee Harvey Oswald, but Trump actually went to secure the nomination shortly thereafter. It's a truly strange outcome given the media's near-deafening silence regarding a host of well-researched, evidence-based, and compellingly written books on the assassination. Just ask David Talbot, James Douglas, and dozens of other journalists and academics. They will all tell you there is a de facto blackout of their work. And they'll also tell you that the conspiracy theory, or theorist label, is a mortal wound in the mainstream press. But Trump suffered no such problem after peddling a specious theory published by a paper associated with journalistic quackery. Like so many of his bloviations, Trump firmly planted the Kennedy assassination out in loony land. He also reinforced the idea of Oswald as the assassin. And he established himself as America's most infamous and recognizable conspiracy theorist. But just to take a page from the Donald's playbook, maybe he unintentionally exposed himself as America's ultimate crisis actor. There's no doubt that Trump's campaign is an ongoing crisis, and he sure seems like he's playing a character. And he's falsely flagging the political landscape with cranky conspiracies, specie, specious accusations, and huge helpings of phony baloney. More importantly, his tenacious shtick threatens to conveniently take real investigations with real evidence about real-life criminal conspiracies down in flames with him. The problem isn't that Obama's a secret Muslim. The problem is that he's lorded over a mostly secret extrajudicial program to kill military-aged Muslim males with drones. The problem isn't that Obama and Hillary founded ISIS. The problem is the metastasizing U.S. imperium that's arming the world and widening the so-called war on terror. 
The problem isn't Muslims' infiltration of the West. The problem is that America's war of terror is catalyzing an unprecedented global humanitarian nightmare. The problem isn't that the media is lying about Trump's imploding campaign. The problem is that the media ignored the damning conclusions of the UK's Chilcot report and the troubling details of the long-anticipated 28 pages on Saudi involvement in 9-11. The problem isn't that China and Mexico have clever leaders who hoodwink Americans out of their economic birthright. The problem is that executives of American corporations use that cheap labor to pad their executive compensation packages instead of paying middle-class wages to workers at home. And the biggest problem of all is that real criminal conspiracies, like the perfectly legal scam of the hyper-financialized boom and bust and bailout economy, get hopelessly lost in the miasma of falsely flagged blather coming out of Trump's gold-encrusted cake hole. To be fair, he identified and exploited the quite, quite real crisis of the two-party system. But his wacky acts making it easier and easier to discount his valid criticism of the Iraq war, of high-priced political puppetry, of anti-Russian hysteria, and the selling out of American workers. Even worse, the quite real grievances of his supporters may get dismissively labeled as conspiracy theories even as he rides off to enjoy a great life as one of the world's biggest celebrities. Perhaps Robert De Niro nailed it when he likened Trump to a latter-day Travis Bickle. De Niro, whose performance in Taxi Driver made Bickle a cultural icon, said that after Bickle's, Bickle's crazy pronouncements and the film's climactic bloodbath, the irony at the end is that Bickle is back driving a cab. Could that be Trump's final act? Could Trump, the crisis actor, simply return to television with a bigger, more devoted audience than ever before? Oddly enough, Travis Bickle was based on the diaries of Arthur Bremer, the man whose assassination attempt paralyzed presidential candidate George Wallace in 1972. Bremer said he was motivated by fame rather than by a political ideology, kind of like Trump, no? Coincidentally, Trump has drawn comparisons to Wallace, and he was outraged by the recent release of another assassin, John Hinckley Jr., Often ignored is the fact that the Hinckley family had a political relationship with the family of then-Vice President George H.W. Bush. Not ignored was Hinckley's desire to impress Jodie Foster, which, according to the official story, is why he shot Reagan. It was an obsession he got from watching, wait for it, Taxi Driver. It also seems pretty darn spooky. Fortunately, Trump hasn't falsely flagged that conspiracy. Yet. Donald Trump, the crisis actor, a conspiracy to end all conspiracies. That's quite the piece written by J.P. Soddle, posted to antimedia.org. It puts it all in there. It pretty much puts it all in there in a lot of ways that we've been looking at what's quite literally playing out on the stage in front of us. You're listening to The Morning Monarchy for Thursday, August 18th, 2016. I am James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com.